Greetings, my name is Ryan Nitsch. I'm a Principal Solutions Architect with Amazon Web Services. Joining me here again is Thatcher from Red Hat. Thatcher, say hi. Hi, I'm Thatcher. I'm a manager of OpenShift Black Belt with Red Hat. Um, it's my job to help customers figure out how to transition from legacy on-premises OpenShift to a managed service in the cloud. Right, you say legacy, so that ties in very nice and neatly with my problem today. Uh, for the last eight years, I've been talking to customers. Everybody has this desire for greater agility to move faster. They're modernizing their businesses. One piece of that modernization is moving towards uh, adopting a container solution, changing their development strategy and then they move their workloads into that environment. It's typically open shift. Nowadays, it's modernizing to a more managed approach. So managed open shift on AWS, it's the Red Hat open shift service on AWS called Rosa. But then customers come to me and they, they take that next step of evolution. Right. How do I take native AWS services. So the AWS services that are built from the ground up to be scalable, resilient, secure, and managed for me. And, and how do I take advantage of those to complement the workloads I already have in OpenShift? And automatically I'm thinking things like databases, queuing mechanisms, right. no SQL environments. Yeah. Dynamo, Here, even S3. Yeah. Here's, the, here's the spanner yeah. in the works, the one thing that everybody's asking for how do I do that without needing to context switch between something like OpenShift and an AWS console? How do I stop logging in out to different environments? How do Having I to contact maybe a second team that's Co responsible for provisioning those things. Yeah, it, reducing the friction for getting, uh, for adopting those cloud native services. It, that it's are that age on old. How, how do I take that shift to the left and really enable app owners that are using OpenShift? And, and there are some industry buzzwords in here. I will concede okay. that. Well, let's start by drawing ourselves a notional Rosa cluster. Okay, so this is managed OpenShift. It's it's OpenShift. Only difference is you've got a Red Hat SRE team <laughs> managing It's low the drama suite. OpenShift. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And uh, we would typically got a app team. This is uh, a group of developers, maybe some operator admins interacting with that OpenShift cluster or right. you know, the CI CD process around they're it. They're doing deployments, they're deploying the products they're building and may, or products that they support. They're typically interacting with either Kubernetes directly or they're using some sort of uh, manifest file that they are pushing into right. uh, that, that OpenShift environment. One way to do this would have this person go into an AWS console, stand up an AWS service, RDS as an example, then come back to right. OpenShift and create services and bindings, and it's a very clunky stitching. Right, and maybe after a little bit, they write themselves some bash scripts where they run against the AWS CLI to do it. It's still not, uh, there's still a lot of friction there. Um, so there is, there is an approach for this that makes, uh, that makes, that keeps the developer entirely interacting with Rosa through the control plane. Um, and what I'm going to go ahead and do here is just draw the Kubernetes API as a piece of this, because of course that's kind of the core of OpenShift. Um, and what that API allows you to do is install custom resource definitions. Ah, oh, I think I see where you're going. Right. You're going to recommend the Amazon controller for Kubernetes. I am. I am. Okay. <laughs> so so we got we got ACK over here. Uh, this is a operator framework that allows you to define AWS services and basically control and manage them from within OpenShift. Right. right. Now, um, it's, it's not a product. It, it's not you're installing one AC. You're, you're no, kind no. of installing a no, collection of different. No, it's more of a gateway um, that allows you to interact with the AWS API, but using sort of this Kubernetes native YAML that you are already used to. So, you know, most people who use OCP or Kubernetes are familiar with a deployment, capital D. Um, after installing ACK, the correct controllers, you could refer to a bucket, capital B, that's an S3 bucket, or a table, capital T, which is DynamoDB table. Um, so what, what, what does it practically look like? You're going into OpenShift, you're going to go to the operator hub, and you'll, you'll see an ACK for uh, RDS as a relational database. Right, and they are, each ACK is specific to an AWS product. 
Uh, what would it typically see? Uh, some sort of RDS, queuing mechanism? S3, uh, Amazon Message Queue, uh, uh, Dynamo, of course, very common one. Um, there are others. I know API Gateway is in there. Um, yeah, uh, there's quite a number. What, of once the operator is installed, you can continuously invoke it or interact with it to right. provision as well as bind that service back to your application running here in OpenShift. Right, right. So, you know, uh, as an example, let's use RDS, very common. Um, you would post uh, a, a chunk of YAML that defined a DB instance object um, to the Kubernetes API. Uh, the API itself would validate that request, and then it would hand it to the controller that's running. And it's the controller's job to translate that into calls to the AWS API, so native. Um, when that, assuming that that succeeds, that the, you know, the correct permissions are there, and we'll talk about that in a minute here, um, the controller will then inject a secret back into the requesting namespace that contains the connection string, um, so you know, host name, endpoint, and credentials to talk to that RDS instance, um, and allowing you then to consume that um, that information in other pieces of the solution that you've built. Um, so whether it's a deployment or a service, um, to connect those up. So there's a couple of things that you mentioned over there. Uh, inside OpenShift, there's a few constructs. There are the built-in secrets inside OpenShift. We're going to take the information, and if you're talking about RDS, we're talking about the RDS database endpoint. That right. would be one piece of information. Uh, the IAM credentials needed to authenticate to that. So those would be stored inside OpenShift as secrets, and by applications would be able to, uh, is binding the correct word? I think that's fair. Yeah, people uh, often use that term to describe we, binding a secret to a workload. We also have this context of a Kubernetes service or an OpenShift service. Uh, I typically use them for uh, you know user accounts or credentials that I'm linking to my applications. So if my app needed to interact with RDS, I, I may create a service for that. And these are internal to OpenShift, whether it's uh, managed or, or self-managed. Right, they're native to the API. Yeah. Uh, so the ACK platform ultimately will manifest a RDS instance or, or a, a bunch of them, <laughs> or a bunch of them. <laughs> S3 bucket uh, and um, a Dynamo DB table, uh, a message queue. DB yeah. table and these objects exist in the AWS account. They don't exist inside OpenShift. We're connecting from my application workload on OpenShift to those systems there. That has an interesting benefit. If I look at it, what we've done is we've now taken all of the storage that used to be <laughs> persistent storage yes. here, and, and we've made that... Uh, Moved it into managed services. Um, so again, that sort of second evolution that often happens um, as organizations move into the cloud, which is they move the workloads that they have, they get them working, and then they, they start to adapt their architecture to, to take advantage of how easy it is to, to use these managed services to, to their best effect. Very recently, uh, well, not very recently, Rosa had something called dash dash STS, where we can use the secure token service from AWS mm -hmm. to get least privilege as well as uh, temporary credentials, so credential cycling. Right. More like a managed credential rather than a long lived. Yeah. That username and recently password. has been updated to ACK as well. And it works. So we now have. <laughs> Uh, STS capabilities on each. So the ACK operator for RDS now gets a policy specific to that so RDS. So RDS. again, least privilege, and we get that credential rotation, uh, really taking the benefit of what uh, managed OpenShift has had for a little while now and bringing that into these, each of these operators. And I think as we see more and more operators being created, whether for AWS services or for other components of OpenShift, we're going to continue to see that least privilege, that temporary credential right. cycling. Making it so, you, you, so less and less is required uh, from a security perspective. Um, yeah, worth noting too that the, the policies um, to be attached to each of these ACK instances, um, each of these has its own little GitHub repo um, and there's documentation in there. One of the things in that documentation that's required to be there is an example policy to get you started. Um, if you do want to, um, if you do want to adopt ACK and start using it. 
This is a really great way for customers to take that next step of evolution and, and really cut down on undifferentiated heavy lifting. Uh, not have to solve scaling security issues and resilience issues themselves. Or even provisioning issues. <laughs> yeah. Really, uh, you know, if a developer needs an RDS instance, they can get one. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, keep me honest, ACK does not support every single AWS service yet. It it's does an not. Growing. I know one that I is near and dear to my own heart that I know is not on the list is Kinesis. Um, I'm half tempted to write it myself at this point. <laughs> so. That's a very valid point. So ACK does provide a framework. There's nothing stopping customers from right. writing their own Absolutely. operators. Uh, but what AWS and Red Hat are doing is they are gradually adding in more and more service support. And as it manifests in ACK, uh, these are appearing inside OpenShift, inside the operator hub as a, a growing list of AWS services to complement your workloads. Right. Thatcher, as always, fantastic having you here. Uh, fun discussions. Great to be here with you. Thank you. Thank you all for watching. Yeah.